Ramses, son of Setnacht, he accrues victories with ease, and his pride grows with every trial. He claims to bear divine favor, and even I cannot deny an air of destiny surrounds him. Perhaps the gods call on young Ramses to match the greatness of his namesake. And one day, roll over all of Egypt. Ramses, I'm sure, believes so. Matt smiles upon Egypt, the Nile flows, the sand shift, and all is well in the land of gold and grain. Peace hard won comes thanks to a familiar face. Age worn and weathered by war, Ramesses III sits upon a throne inherited not through blood, but by it. He has shorn his braid of youth and rules over an Egypt united. In layman's terms, it's turn 98, we've vassalized or made allies of every Egyptian faction, our economy's stable, there's no threat of civil war on the horizon, and happiness has never been higher. We've even bought culture to large swaths of Canaan. Of course, we're still on the lookout for court schemers, and there's that business of Hattie to deal with, but no worry. We've been following the path of Thutmose the Conqueror, and we're setting our sights on Hattusa. Prosperity's too small a word for the paradise we've created. Indeed we have arrived at the Field of Reeds. Nothing good lasts forever, and whilst the Sea Peoples are no strangers to us at this point, Something has shifted in the air. A great wave approaches Egypt's shores and already we've fallen into crisis. Unrest in Hattusa's unexplored lands must be the culprit, meaning Egypt is civilization's last bastion. Only Ramesses III stands between the Sea Peoples and the collapse of the Bronze Age. Ah, but we didn't become a god king by resting on our laurels. No, Ramesses puts the row in Pharaoh. So we'll head the raiders off at the point of invasion, bolstering the defences of Pyunaman, Perwajet, and Pi Ramesses. And what are vassals for if not to bleed on our command? Come on, Seti, get stuck in there, mate. Hmm, I suppose a pharaoh should ask of his people nothing more than he is willing to do himself, and so will recall our Canaan forces in defence of Kemet. The Black Lands will soon be stained red, and conflict calls for a different pharaoh. Diplomacy and legitimacy will not save us from these seafaring barbarians, and so we don our Kepesh crown. Our subjects lament and our allies gossip, but this is a threat to be taken seriously. Who better to draw first blood than a pharaoh of war? We split our forces into three fronts, hoping to divide the invading army's attention. One half will attempt to lure their heavy and medium units uphill and utilize the shield wall stance to mitigate missile damage whilst peppering their soldiers with arrows. Our second front takes the brunt of their melee power. Elsewhere, Ramesses leads his missile chariots on hit-and-run chases, kiting and exhausting ground units that might otherwise overwhelm our under-armoured front lines. Egyptian armies do not rely on heavy armour, so we can forget about defeating the Sea Peoples with strength alone. But the Sea Peoples will not be fully baited, and will move our units to box them in. Bit by bit, we chip away at their armour and morale. If we can destroy the eastern half of their forces quickly, we can move to flank their second army and crush them. Overwhelmed and penned in, and before long... The enemy general has perished! Oh. Thank you, announcer. The taste of victory turns to ash on our tongue. 
The Sea Peoples have used the freeway of the Nile to bypass our defences and are pressing deeper into Egypt. We'll send Senefi in pursuit whilst Ramesses recovers from his battle. Elsewhere, Wabaka draws near. With any luck, he won't arrive to ruin and rubble. To prepare for this war, we've been producing outside of our means. Pre-existing healthy resource stores means we can sustain a moderately lengthy conflict, but we'll need to lean on our subjects to do so. Beyond trade deals, gifts and tribute, we can play the court to offset the attrition. Kept in high enough regard, an Amames will bolster our gold reserves upon request. Likewise, the treasurer, more than a simple bean counter, can shift numbers and reduce the cost of certain industries for a time. The first commander oversees the pharaoh's armies. Such a lofty position can allocate discounts to certain unit types, and with the position being held by Ramesses' own general, we can set army wages at will and need not worry about plots. The pharaoh has tools aplenty to soften the drain of war, but the drain is inevitable, and the only way out is through. In an ideal world, we'd lure these heavy armor-wearing sea folk into the mud and the river and laugh as they sink under it. Unfortunately, we attacked them and they're not feeling suicidal today. First across will be our chariots, who will try to get behind them. Some casualties are expected, but we mostly managed to get them across. We'll quickly isolate the units chasing our chariots and focus them down with tight missile fire and melee units. Your general is under attack! The bulk of the force will keep their melee units busy whilst our chariots are unleashed on their back line. I know they're missile chariots, but a good cycle charge never hurt anyone. Except the people being charged. Under the banner of Ramesses III, the Sea Peoples break and flee, leaving behind them a trail of corpses. With Senefi victorious further inland, Ramesses and Consina face their next opponents. Ramesses meets the would-be raiders on the dunes amid a sandstorm. Not ideal conditions for our missile chariots, but we'll use the storm to conceal a flanking force. We need not worry about fire given the wind, so into the cops we march. We'll sandwich their forces with our flankers and sow discord with our chariots. Then, from the ledge above, our archers seal the deal. Over up the Nile, Consina contends with his own invaders. We'll use the ridge to position our archers on the high ground and attempt to dissuade the enemy from approaching with a spot of fire. But not even the threat of burning can keep the Sea Peoples at bay. Our swordsmen hold them off whilst our archers shoot them down. The bulk of the melee happens on the sands below, and elsewhere, our chariots keep several heavy units away from the fray. Three armies dealt with, but two more are heading for the heart of Egypt. It's Ramesses' duty to protect these lands, so we'll send the freshly arrived Wabaka on a high speed, high risk boat chase. The Sea Peoples ignored Menefer this time, but we won't be caught unaware again, so we'll station Senefi in Menefer for the time being. I don't like how much bronze we're hemorrhaging, so we'll cozy up to Tulsa and convince her to reduce the cost of our weapons construction for the time being. Right, well, I might be tempting fate here, but I think we're in a fairly good position. In your face, sea peoples. Call that a great wave. I mean, come on. Could try a little harder, couldn't you? Yeah, okay. I, I knew that was going to happen. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh. They come as an unrelenting storm. Ship after ship crashing against our shores. We destroy one, and two slip past us. 
Egypt and Sinai we can hold for now, but Canaan, Canaan is sacrificed. The cult center of Ashkelon falls and the light of civilization dims, collapses upon us. And whilst panic and disorder mounts in Egypt, the sea people's lust for ruin. I will prove myself. War takes and takes relentlessly. For some, it takes too much. Rebellions are inevitable in times of strife, but we must squash them or risk a challenge to our authority. Subtler fawns have felled larger lions and cannot afford mercy. Our enemy abides by a similar philosophy. the Egyptian equivalent of a pickle, which is ironic because we're burning through a lot of food. Well, we're burning through all our resources, really, but elsewhere there are riots in the streets, caners on fire, and court games are still afoot. We're fighting for our lives, and you're attempting to blackmail me, I'm a mess? Where's your head? Talking of priorities, we need to find a way to fight back and quickly. We're treading water, but if we allow the Sea Peoples to destroy Damascus, the world could be lost to collapse. Ascalon's been reduced to rubble, and we can only assume that most of the Hittite cult centers have been destroyed too. We can no longer afford to protect Egypt's borders alone. To save Egypt, we cannot allow the Sea Peoples to marauder through Canaan unchecked. We'll send Senefi to reclaim Ashkelon, and Consina to break the siege of Damascus. As Ramesses drapes himself in glory, his people are slaughtered, both at home and abroad. Oh, by the gods, more ships. Lots of ships. Too many to hold at the mouth of the Nile. We'll pull Ramesses and we'll back a back to protect our cult centers and hopefully barricade the Nile. We don't want them slipping past us again. Some good news at last and Senefi recaptures Ashkelon. By prioritizing the world's cult centers, we can stave off the collapse and just as importantly, hold on to our legitimacy as Pharaoh. If either Amames or Tosaret decide they can do a better job than me, it'll be game over for Egypt. To retake Damascus, we'll use Ramesses' faction command to attack in March stance. We march on Damascus and are supported by the settlement's barracks. We break our chariots away from the main force and surround the invaders. Elsewhere, Wabaka is intercepted on his retreat and faces overwhelming odds. Cena and his allies surround and slaughter the Sea Peoples. The same happens to Wabaka. This is fine. We're fine. It's just six full stack armies. I'm not worried. I'm not. I'm not worried. I'm not. I'm a little bit worried. I'm going to be honest but I think I know how to overcome them. We've not fully committed to this war yet. Deep down, I was kind of hoping we could maintain order and a decent economy whilst heroically fighting them off despite being outnumbered. 
I see now that's unlikely. We can survive this, but our coffers can't. It's time to call on Komet to defend itself. We'll raise three new armies, one in Menefer, one in Ayanu, and the last in Perwajet. In the special recruitment tab, we have access to dozens of rough and ready fighters hailing from all over Egypt thanks to our vassals. A single round of regular recruiting for each general gets us up to three full stack armies. Ramesses makes four. But we're still outnumbered, and Senefi won't make it back before the bloodshed. One last time, Ramesses III must implore his subjects to take up arms. The Pharaoh calls, and the Black Lands answer. dreams, I can see them still. Warriors, the people of the sea. The whole earth was emptied. No land could stand against their force. And then, like a whisper on the western wind, they were gone. Mighty set. Master of storms, shaker of the heavens. He had closed the door in the north, and the invaders came no more. By Ra's will, the world survived. At least, for now. <laughs>